A very good morning to you from Amsterdam for the 44th edition of this famous Big City Marathon. We're coming to you live this morning from the city's famous Olympic Stadium that hosted the 1928 Olympic Games. Well, conditions here this morning are near perfect for the marathon. Dry and with very little wind, temperatures around 9 degrees now and forecast to rise to around 12 degrees by lunchtime. Very little wind, a very slight wind from the southeast. Well, thousands of foreign runners have come to Amsterdam in search of a good time on the city's pancake flat course. And as well as the fast course, of course, a big draw to Amsterdam are the city's famous museums and canals, the parks and the beautiful Amstel River, which gives the city its name. 17,000 participants in the marathon today, representing 140 nationalities. The half marathon and the 8K following the marathon later today. Let's just have a look now at the marathon route, starting out through Fondle Park, past the Rijksmuseum, and then heading south down to the banks of the Amstel. Has the turnaround point at Oudegech, and then heads back through the business district into the city centre, crossing back over the Amstel at 37k, back through Fondle Park to finish back into the stadium. Well, it's 26 years since the Dutch athletes got on the podium here in Amsterdam. So as well as chasing a fast time, Nigea could make today a very big day for Dutch marathon running. Well, sitting alongside me here in the commentary box, I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Dennis. And Chris, I've, I've got to start by asking you about your weekend in Vienna where you were commentating on Kipchoge's sub two hour performance. Yeah, just about recovered from that, an emotional day. Hello, Richard, hello, everybody. Terrific to be back in Amsterdam. Yes, and uh, we will talk, I'm sure, during the course of this race uh, about that uh, terrific performance by Elliot Kipchoge and the, uh, the implications and the ramifications on marathon running all over the world. But we're here on the start line of the, uh, the Amsterdam Marathon in this uh, famous Olympic Stadium. There's the young Tadu Abata. Yeah, Tadu Abata from Ethiopia, just uh, 22 years old, one of the younger elite athletes here. And uh, of course, Ethiopia and Ken with this rich tradition and this terrific track record here in Amsterdam. They're the pacemakers. We'll uh, talk you through the times, but essentially the, the leading group led by two Kip twos, Edwin and Frederick, will be going out in uh, 62.30, which is pretty keen slightly quicker than uh, the same race last year. So nervous tension. 17,000 coiled springs rating to go. Nervous anticipation. And away we go. The 44th Amsterdam Marathon in 2019 is officially underway. 42.195 kilometers, 26.2 miles if you prefer the distance in old money, light ahead. We've already seen the course and it's a terrific course. And we've got a great field here. And of course, I bring you the elite athletes progress. We'll give you uh, as many split times as we can. And Richard, course records are potentially up for grabs and interesting in that interview there with uh, Abner Nagea there, a potential European record, Mo Farah, 2.05.11. Yes, I mean, it would be amazing if uh, Abdi could get close to, to Mo's European record. And I think the great thing about Nagea's career uh, since he moved up to the marathon is that as the years have gone by, he's just chipped away at his best time. You know, he's, he ran his first marathon in, in Eindhoven, ran 2.11. And uh, here in Amsterdam, we, we saw him three years ago around 2.10, and now he's lowered that. Uh, he ran 2.08 in Amsterdam, and then in Rotterdam earlier this year, ran a 2.06. So every year almost, we've seen him reduce his, his best time. And, and the big question today is whether he can go even faster than six months ago, when he set a new Dutch marathon record of 2.06.17, so if he goes faster, that would be a big achievement if he can get 
anywhere near Mose 205 11. He'd have to run a minute faster, just over a minute faster than his best to beat that record. But that's what he's been talking about. Yeah, very encouraging indeed. So uh, half a kilometre into this uh, famous course, for those of you who know Amsterdam well, they've uh, come out of the stadium where we are here and they're making their way north along the uh, Amstel Wensweg up towards uh, Fondel Park for the first time. And there's uh, an initial loop of, what, about six kilometres that they will do, passing through the, the Rijksmuseum, the famous uh, Rijksmuseum, and uh, then they will head south. And the main portion of this race, as we saw from the, uh, the course map, takes them uh, along the banks of the, the really attractive banks of the Amstel River all the way down to uh, Oudekerk, the most southerly point of this course. But that's the scene, the Olympic Stadium, 1928, remember? It was the first time a marathon was run in uh, this famous city. It was won by uh, Bouhera Al-Ouafi from Algeria in 2.32.57, for those of you who like your history. And an, obviously a nice thing for us commentating here in the stadium is that we're seeing the thousands of participants cross the start line and head out on their journey. 42 kilometers of tarmac ahead of them. We'll all be returning back to the stadium later this morning or into the afternoon. In one shape, we hope, with uh, hopefully a good experience. Through the first kilometer unofficially in 2.55, so that's a pretty sprightly start there for the, uh, the lead men at the front. And again, just to put it into context uh, for last weekend, Richard mentioned uh, the historic sub two hour marathon run in Vienna last weekend by Elliot Kipchoge. 2.50, of course, was his average pace throughout the whole race. It was quite extraordinary. 2.50 bringing him home in 1.59.40. Well, right in the middle of that lead group, the pacer in the white vest is Edwin Kiptu. And Edwin was pacing here last year, did a great job, took the leaders through to just short of 30k and that's what they'll be hoping again today he's got uh, two other kenyans alongside him to to help him do the pacing and there is Negea. will be a little bit unusual for him here in amsterdam to be with the lead group we've seen him uh, run very well here but he's never put himself right at the front of the race. Well, today, uh, the pace for that lead group has been asked 62.30, and Nagea is certainly willing to go with it. In fact, six months ago in Rotterdam, when he ran his best time, he went through halfway in 62.17, so he knows all about this pace. So there we are, just coming into Funnel Park for the first time, and they're gonna hang a, a right into this famous park, one of the, uh, the main green spaces in the centre of Amsterdam. It's always very popular all times of the year. I was cycling through there yesterday. There it is. It's a, a majestic, really nice park, which uh, attracts runners and cyclists and uh, in the summer sunbathers, of course, as well. And it really is a, a beautiful site, pancake flat, as is the, uh, the entire course here. The key thing about Abdi, I think, Richard, and we just got a glimpse of him there, is uh, in, in trying to keep this leading group, led by uh, Edwin Kiptu, the pacemaker. He needs to make sure that he doesn't get dropped off the back early and find himself in no man's land, I guess. Yes, I mean, I think these uh, the, the top big city marathons around the world, they always are aiming to, to go faster than last year. And of course, Chirono set such a high standard last year with his 2.04.06. And I think the organizers have been sensible not to ask for too fast a pace. They could have could have gone for 62 minutes, which would, would have been perhaps a little bit too fast. But what they've decided to do is to go for a 62.30 and then hope that the, the leading runners can run an even faster second half and get close to the mark set by Chirono here last year. Chirono, of course, uh, who's the winner not just last year, as Richard was saying, but, uh, but the year before as well, with success in, in Chicago last weekend winning there brilliantly in 2.05.45. And uh, really, what, wasn't it quite a weekend, Richard, for, for marathon running in general? We've mentioned the sub two marathon challenge. It wasn't a race, of course. It won't be uh, recognized as a world record, Elliot Kipchoge. In the same weekend, Bridget Kosgai smashing Paula Radcliffe's long-standing world record in the women's marathon, also in Chicago, 2.14.04. 
and then Lawrence Chirono winning, as I mentioned, in Chicago, a, a two-time winner here. So last weekend, very special, and uh, I think injects a, an extra bit of excitement, I think, into Amsterdam this weekend and other marathons to come. Yes, and that was coming off uh, Kenanisa's amazing performance in Berlin at the end of September. And then we had the World Championships and uh, then we were all gearing up for uh, Kipchoge's sub two hour attempt, which he achieved and we'd hardly recovered from the, the, the shock and excitement of uh, that performance before we then saw Koskai. So I think it's been a very special period over the last month for world marathon running and I'm sure today we're going to see another great race. Just got another glimpse of uh, Taro Abete there. We saw him at the uh, at the start line, one of the younger participants here today. Quite a character. We were talking to uh, the organisers last night and uh, he's uh, never smiling. He's uh, always positive. There he is in the, uh, the middle of that pack with the green and blue vest. So we'll keep an eye out on uh, Taro Abete. Yes, he, he, he won his last uh, marathon in Hamburg just six months ago in very, very di different conditions. It was pouring down with rain for most of the race, so he'll be pleased that the conditions are a bit kinder today. Well, the pace is really quick here. He just uh, got a, a second kilometre of uh, unofficially 5.48, so they're not hanging around here. I'll try and bring you uh, an official 5K split just to put into context how quickly this group is, but we've got... Obviously, with the pacemakers doing a great job there, we've got, what, about 15 or 16. Let's just dip into the, uh, the women's race there. We've got uh, dedicated pacemakers for the women's race, including Michel Butter. I think, is he one of the women's pacemakers? Or is he's the second group, I think, Richard. Help me out here. He's the second group, I think, for the men's race, yeah? Yeah, I think they've asked uh, Butter to go through halfway in 67, so that's going to be faster than uh, what the women want. Oh. Uh, Michel Butter, we've often seen him, ran his best time here in Amsterdam seven years ago, but today doing pacemaking duties. Uh, so the women's race, uh, F3 is Mimi Bellata, the fastest uh, female in the field with 2.22.29, running alongside her, the second placed athlete from last year, Shashu Insermu. If you remember, Chris, she went out very fast here last year in, co in search of the, the course record, Mesedet Hailu's course record from 2012. So that's the Ethiopian. Shashu Insermu has the best time of 2.23.28. I think last year she went through halfway in under 70 minutes. It'd be interesting to see what she's learned from that experience. I think you and I both felt that she actually, she was almost too gung-ho, wasn't she? Too aggressive and then ended up paying for it. I think at one stage she was even ahead of the pacemakers from memory. Yes, that's right. I think she, she made it very, very difficult for all the, uh, the female athletes that are going out so fast. They all um, felt they had to go with her, but uh, all paid the price in the, in the final 10K. I mean, fair due, she hung on, hung on for second place, but uh, I think the way they've set out this year is, is probably more sensible through three kilometers so just clicking off these uh, early clicks and of course it's all a question of settling down and just seeing how you feel we saw the athletes at breakfast this morning we uh, we took the team bus with them as well they're uh, very quiet and just uh, in contemplation as they think about the task at, uh, at hand for most of them of course it's a, a well rehearsed routine as they now come out of fondle park they'll take a right turn and uh, very shortly they'll be uh, going towards or in front of the uh, museum plane notably the, the Rice Museum will we'll get a good view of that, I'm sure. And it was nice to see them, wasn't it, Richard? Uh, entertained at the, uh, at the Rice Museum side and uh, having their photos taken in front of the, uh, the night watch. Yeah, well, Amsterdam is, is so special for not only the Rijksmuseum Museum, but uh, the other museums in, in town. And so it, it just seems very fitting that uh, you have a press conference there, the best backdrop that the city can offer for international visitors including these uh, fast Kenyan and Ethiopian athletes. Interestingly, there in the middle of the, the pacemaking group, Edwin Kiptu seems to be really directing the pace and directing his, his fellow pacemakers. Yeah, there's no doubt who's boss there. There is the Rijksmuseum. Museum. Absolutely splendid. 
underwent a, a major refurbishment. They're going to turn right and go through the arches and into the uh, museum plain. And uh, not surprisingly, the marathon there showing off, showcasing, if you like, Amsterdam in all its glory. And it doesn't get much better than that. Going through the arches of this famous museum, which, of course, is more than just about the Night Watch, which uh, actually is being restored at the moment. But they'll go through and they'll come out into the museum plane. And you mentioned the European Championships held here, Richard, what, three years ago, and uh, some of the field events, I think, were taken, were, were, were actually staged, weren't they, on this very square? Well, City Athletics is, uh, has become a very popular sport, and I think it's a great way of, of bringing athletics much closer to the public. And Amsterdam has those, those squares uh, and places in, in the city which make that possible. So that's some of the uh, the athletes in that leading group. Dixie, so we've talked about Bernard Coetch, another fast Kenyan, PB of 204.53. And some of the lesser known names also in that group of about 14 athletes. And you can see Abdi Nagea still in that group, but right at the back probably quite sensibly not wanting to push any harder than he has to but as you say Chris so important for him to to be with the group and take advantage of really letting them set the pace and him just relaxing as much as he can yeah I think the uh, the advice that he'd been given was just to there he is just hang off the back and my only worry as I mentioned is that this is going through at 62 30 we mentioned the second uh, group which is behind them at 67 going through halfway so that's quite a quite a different pace and the danger for, for Abdi is that he maybe ends up between the two groups if he's not careful trying to hang on to the coattails there he is just taking a drink hanging on to the coattails of the first group uh, and yet way ahead of the second group yeah, I think it helps uh, helps Abdi that um, he knows the course uh, this is his third run in Amsterdam, his 11th marathon overall. So approaching five kilometres. Again, just a little check from last weekend. Sub to our marathon pace, Elliot Kipchoge went through 5K in 14.13, which is where we are now on the clock. They're not far behind that, you know, are they? They're going along at a, at a fair old lick here in these opening a few kilometres. Let's give you a, a 5k split. Well, Chris, I think you're right. They they have set out probably a little bit faster than schedule, going through 5k in 1430. Yep, 1430 on the nose. And that is uh, that is lively. That will put them uh, well. That will put them inside on this pace. 203 pace. That's quick. Well, Nagaya still there still in that leading group just trying to hang on importantly took his his first bottle at the five kilometer drink drink station so they're heading south and they will be shortly entering stadion vague which eventually comes all the way back to the olympic stadium where they started they won't do that they'll take a, another right and go down uh, beethovenstraat and then another tight little loop. There are plenty of uh, twists and turns on this course, and then they'll go back north again and eventually settle down. And uh, then they've got the long section between, what, 14K and 20K alongside the, the Amstel, which is uh, picture perfect. It really is so picturesque, that part of the course. Number 11 on the right of the screen is uh, another Kenyan athlete, Maurice Gachaga. Today is only his second marathon, but uh, his his debut performance in Paris earlier this year went well, 2.07.46. And uh, he is confident of improving on that today. Well, I'd like to picture the women approaching uh, five kilometers. So let's try and bring you a... Uh, 5k split for the women, if you can see them come through here. Getting through there in what, about 16.28, 16.27, 16.28. I think 
think the women have got a few more tasters because they've got both male tastemakers and female tastemakers and just other men who are not tastemaking but uh, looking for a time of around that 2.20. So they won't be short of people to run with. I think in the men's race, uh, the question is how far the tastemakers can take them. If they can do a good job, we would expect the tastemakers to be still at the front of that group through 25k and maybe as far as as 30k yeah edwin kipto you mentioned did a terrific job last year he's uh he's got a half marathon best of 59 26 he's never actually won uh, run an entire marathon and this is uh this one three half marathons already in 2019 it's quite a terrific run of 14 in total Dick Caesar. We've talked about him. 25 years old. Finished third here, so again he will have the experience of knowing this course. And the word is that he's in in good shape. I think Chris is in good shape. I think last year, 2018, was a, a great year for him. I, I remember being in Mumbai at the start of 2018 when he he won Mumbai in 2.09 in, in pretty difficult and, and different conditions to what he's got here in Amsterdam and then he went on to Hamburg and won there so he had two very big big city wins in 2018. 2019 has been a slightly different year for him um, went to Boston and uh, didn't finish the race there but we were talking with uh, his coach Gitani Tessima yesterday and Gitani said he's done all the training and he's ready to to race well It'll be interesting to see if he can uh, win here today. Yeah, he wasn't able to finish in Boston, was he? So uh, that's a DNF for 2019. In fact, he, he, he hasn't had any specific race preparation for the Amsterdam Marathon today. And um, yeah, I think we, were, we were hearing yesterday, sometimes that can be no bad thing. Yeah. Well, in the women's race, just spotted a British athlete on the left of the screen in the blue vest from Hastings AC, Ross Skelton. Uh, one of those athletes, as I say, he's, he's not there for pacemaking. He's there to run his own race and he'll be aiming for a time of around 2.20. As we said, the pacemakers for the women's race have been asked to go through halfway in 70.30. And if they keep that pace, they would be inside the course record set by Nessa and Hainu here in 2012, which is 2.21.09. Yeah, we've been really sport in recent years, haven't we, with uh, with course records. Lawrence Chirono beating the course record. In fact, in the men's race, the course record has gone in each of the last three years. Last year with Chirono, the year before back by Chirono again. And Daniel Wanjiru won here in 2016, also in a course record. Yeah, and I think the, the fastest five times, the fastest five times that have been run here in Amsterdam have taken place in the last two years, and that just shows how the race has moved on. I, I remember being here uh, to watch Hailey when he won here 14 years ago in 2005. He ran 2.06.20, and, and now we're talking about 2.04, 2.05. So every year, it seems, the course record uh, gets gets uh, quicker and quicker. Whether that'll happen again today, that's another big ask. But that's what we're we're hoping and uh, what the organisers have asked the athletes to aim for. Well, it'll be interesting psychologically. Ali Kipchoge last weekend was asked, "What do you think this sub two hour marathon success will do uh, to marathon running?" And he's absolutely convinced that now people know that it's physically possible, humanly possible, to run a marathon in under two hours, even though, of course, last weekend wasn't officially recognised as a world record. He thinks that will have an impact on big city marathons like Amsterdam, like Rotterdam, like marathons all over the world. Now that people know that barrier has been broken, he thinks that will um, take off the, the, the shackles, if you like, and it will allow people to have the confidence to say, OK, fine, we know it's possible now, and that 201.39 that's the official world record held by Kipchoge, that should start to come down. And you mentioned uh, Kenan Isabekele running in, in Berlin, only two seconds outside of that. And that's a, that's a matchup. That's a head-to-head -head I think many people would like to see now. Yes, I mean, 
Kenanisa and uh, Kipchoge, they, they have raced each other, but uh, I don't think they've ever raced each other when both of them have been at their best. And I suppose I'm talking about Kenanisa really, because Kenanisa's uh, marathon career over the last five or six years has been rather up and down, uh, which certainly won't be, can't be said of uh, Kipchoge's uh, record. 12 marathons, 11 victories, and uh, even his uh, second place finish in, in Berlin was behind Wilson Kipsang when he set a new world record. So Kipchoge, the consistent performer, consistent world-class. Uh, Kenanisa has shown us how good he can be. Uh, and yes, Chris, it would be fascinating to bring them both together when they're both at their best. So the runners here, these are the elite men, seven and a half kilometres, approaching, what, uh, half an hour of running here in Amsterdam this morning on a, a really nice, pleasant autumnal morning. And there is uh, Yenu Alimiro, of course, who we know very much on the track, the uh, Ethiopian, 28 years old now. He's a 2.08.56 at best marathon runner, Olympic and world finalist in 5,000 metres. So we know all about him and we remember many, many tussles with uh, Mo Farah and uh, the other leading track athletes. He's just uh, a little bit away. And uh, how worried are you about that? Is that a, a gap between Abdi and the rest of that group that concerns you, Richard? Well, I'm not quite... No, I'm not concerned. I think uh, Abdi is still in contact with the group. I think that certainly can't be said about the Ethiopian, Alimiru. He seems as though he is... He is struggling, and when we talk about struggling, you only need to be a few percent off your best, and you're going to find this pace uh, difficult, even with a, a best time of uh, 2.08. That's uh, Alimiru's best time. Well, Abdi, I think, uh, as we said earlier, if things go really well for him today, he might get close to Mo Farah's European record set just a year ago in Chicago. Mo wasn't able to replicate that type of performance last Sunday. No, disappointing run from Mo Farah, but uh, Abdi looking and sounding really confident, wasn't he? And uh, benefiting from having trained with Elliot in uh, Kaptabat. He's uh, really, he's, he's known as the nomad, isn't he really, Abdi? Yes, Valentine, uh, his manager was, was saying how Abdi used to travel to Ethiopia for training, Kenya for training, sometimes be in Holland, but now he seems as though he's found his, his best base. No wonder, really, being with uh, Kipchoge and Kamwara in Kapsabet under uh, the coaching of Patrick Sang. Well, Linnit Masai, very interesting to see how she's going to run here today. She finished fifth last year in her debut marathon. Today is uh, her third marathon. She ran in London earlier this year, but her best time was was from Amsterdam 12 months ago. The interesting question for Masai is whether she can get anywhere close to, to 220, which would put her into that really top bracket of female marathon runners. Well, again, another terrific track athlete, uh, Masai, 2,000 metres world champion in Berlin 10 years ago. So we'll keep a close eye on uh, Lynette Masai. The men approaching 10 kilometres. They've still got, what, a kilometre and a half to go. Uh, at the moment, they're making their way back up, going north, having been uh, around a little loop through eight and nine kilometres, back along the uh, Stadionweg, and then they're going to hit uh, Churchillan and will head east, due east, before they eventually hit the Amstel. They'll hit the Amstel at about 12 kilometres. And that's quite a tough part of the course in many ways, not only because they might feel a little bit of headwind uh, as they head south. Um, we've heard that there's a little bit of wind. Uh, we'll probably just say it's a breeze, really, coming from the south. Uh, so they might feel that as they get onto the shores of the Amstel. Uh, but then at the turnaround point at Audekerk, just short of halfway, they start to head back north into the city centre and that's why the second half of, the, of uh, today's race might be run slightly faster than the first half. Yeah, if the, if the wind behaves as predicted, they'd have a really welcome tailwind in the last seven kilometres as they head due west. So uh, any, any effect of a slight headwind between, say, 15 and 20 kilometres shouldn't be something, something to be worried about at all as they 
as they hit nine kilometers now. So uh, we'll bring you a 10K split. Remember, they went through five kilometers, the leading men in 14.30, which is, uh, is a really lively pace. And it looks as though they've been maintaining that quite nicely here. Also got the uh, splits from Lawrence Chirono's uh, course record from last year. He went through 29.08 last year on his way to that new course record. So it'll be interesting to see how close to that they are today. Yes, I think he went through halfway 62.11 and so came home second half negative split under 62 minutes and that's why he was able to take so much off off the course record his own course record from 2017 yeah it took over a minute off that record and uh, nice relaxed style Abdi uh, Agea looking really nice and of course the runners on the right hand side left a picture there have the joy of seeing the elite men and the joys of big city marathon running of course as you share exactly the same course as the best in the business there aren't many sports you can say that one of the interesting uh, debutants in the women's field is the ethiopian degitu asmaru she's running alongside mimi bellata and shashu in Seremu. she comes into the race with a very fast half marathon in ras al khama which she ran in February. PB in the half marathon of 66.07, which is by far the fastest half marathon time in that elite women's field, but today is her debut. So no experience at the marathon, and that's probably gonna come into, there you are, there's on the right-hand side, the three Ethiopian athletes. I'm calling Mimi Bellata, Ethiopian born, now running for Bahrain. Mimi Bellata running alongside Degitu Alimiru and Shashu Insermu. Well, the three of them going really nicely. I will try and bring you a 10 kilometer split for the men's race. They're approaching 10 kilometers now. So back to the men's race. Still a large group, as we expected, of about 15 athletes. Kenyan, Ethiopian, and the Somalian-born Dutch athlete, Abdi Nagea. And officially 29-27 through uh, 10 kilometers. So they have slowed slightly, in fact, quite appreciably from that first five kilometer split. So maybe that was a little bit too keen from uh, Edwin Kiptu and his fellow pacemakers. So they've just uh, reined it in a little bit, but 29.27 compares to 29.08 last year, Lawrence Chirono on his way to that course record. I think it probably explains why Abdi Nagir was just hanging back. He, he was probably aware, both in terms of the feeling, um, as well as the, uh, looking at his watch, that they were, they were going very fast. So 29.27 through 10K, and that is ahead of the, the pace that Chirono set last year, or that when he ran his course record 204.06, they went through seven seconds slower. And we can see the leading pacemaker, Edwin Kiptu, just running on the shoulder of Frederick Kiptu and Noah Kipkemboy and trying to orchestrate things in a, in a sensible way. Edwin Kiptu, I'd almost call him a professional pacemaker. As you said, Chris hasn't run a marathon yet and has just been happy to stay running half marathons, sometimes competing at the half marathon, but often just running as a pacemaker in these big city marathons through to halfway and, and keeping going to 25, sometimes even 30K very experienced at pacemaking. Just a shot left of picture there, number five. We haven't mentioned him uh, so far today, Elisha Rotic from, uh, from Kenya. He's got a great record in winning marathons. He's won uh, five of his 13. And that's, uh, that's important. It's always uh, interesting to see athletes, regardless of time, whether they've got the, the competitive 
spirit and competitive edge to actually get a victory in a marathon, wherever that victory may be. He's a 206 runner at best, so uh, keep an eye on him, Alicia Rotic, and of course with Kenya having such a terrific track record in, in this event. I think you're right, Chris. Uh, coming into the race, you, I know my coach always used to say to me, you're only as good as your last race. And uh, if that last race has been a, a win, then uh, the confidence that you you bring into the race counts for a lot. And uh, Rotic yeah, won five of his 13 marathons. I think four out of his last six marathons have ended in victories. So we ought to keep an eye on him. Number five, Elisha Rotic. He's also got a, a devastating burst of speed in the latter stages, so should we, we should just mark your card for that. We're talking about number five, Alicia Rotic there. As we go back to the uh, the women's race, there is uh, Linet Messai still in the mix there in that uh, leading group, but just a little bit off the pace of those three. We've been calling them the three Ethiopians, as Richard said, quite rightly said. Mimi Bellata is now we're representing Bahrain, but she's uh, Ethiopian born. And here we are with the women coming through at 10 kilometers in what, 32, 48, 49. Give you an official split there once it comes through as ratified. Oh, I said there were seven, uh, sorry, five athletes, five female athletes who've run under 224, but in this leading group, there's probably about eight or nine female athletes. So I think a few of these athletes are operating at a pace much faster than they've run before. Well, at the moment, they're on sub-220 pace, having gone through uh, 10 kilometres in inside 32.50. F5, F8, sorry, Wokanish Alamu. She's in the same training group as Degetu Azmeru. And Haven Hailu. So F5, in, in the picture, Guteni Shona has the best time of 2.23.32, which he ran in Houston. And right at the back of picture there, another of the race favorites, F2, Asmera Gebru, finished third here last year behind Tadalic Bekela and Shashu Ensermu. So we've got all the, the favorites in the women's race in that leading group and a few others too. And still going really nicely through 11 kilometers. Very shortly, they're going to take a, another sharp right. And uh, that'll be the last kilometre before they hit the, uh, the Amstel River for the first time. And it's around 13, 14 kilometres that they'll start to encounter possibly a little bit of a headwind, but we use that term loosely. Headwind's probably even too strong. Head breeze, perhaps, because the, uh, the conditions are, are really nice. Job of the pacemakers, of course, really important and often underestimated, Rich, as I, I always feel. It's a, it's, a, it's a huge responsibility, isn't it, to, to provide the pace that's required and make sure that it's bang on the money, and that takes a lot of experience. Well, I was uh, just reading about what was happening last, last week in Vienna and hearing how so many of the pacemakers were so nervous about uh, the duty that had been... Uh, put on them and you know you were telling me Chris that they were in Vienna a month before the race practicing on the very course that they were, they were going to be running and and even uh, you know Bernard Lagat very experienced pacemaker just you know expressing his nerves wanting to support his friend uh, Kipchoge uh, to, to get him to, to that uh, record absolutely right it was a huge responsibility a huge honor and uh, the team spirit I kid you not was was genuine between all the pacemakers they were so pleased for Elliot so honored to be part of, uh, of history and, and the choreography that it was involved in the, the teams of pacemakers coming in and going out this sort of drop-in drop-out system they had with two at the front two behind one captain then Elliot then two wingmen uh, it was beautiful. It was almost like a, a choreographed dance that had been perfected and perfected again. Each man knew exactly what he had to do, when he had to do it. And it's those small details, of course, those marginal gains, as they're called, which uh, all contributed to the final result, which was, of course, a, a little bit of sporting history.
But I suppose no matter how good the pacemakers are, as an athlete, you're out there on your own and you've got to put in all the hard training. And as we know in the marathon, really the, the race comes down to how, how fresh you are and how much energy you've got over that, that last 10, 12 kilometers. He often described as a as a 30 kilometer run followed by a, a 12 kilometer race. So often we see the, the real racing start at around 30, sometimes a little bit later, 35 kilometers. And it's not surprising that at this stage, what uh, barely 12 kilometers into this race, that we still have a, a really healthy crop with uh, Abdi Nagea still at the back there, just still keeping out of trouble. And I think you're right. Uh, Richard, he's, he's certainly very much part of that group. This is a very deliberate ploy of his, isn't it? To be part of the group, but just to, to stick at the back and not get too excited. So 19 athletes in that leading group, with the three pacemakers at the front. Frederick Kiptu and Noah Kipkenboy leading them round that turn. We should just mention also, because uh, we never know with debutants, uh, number 56, Inos Kakopil from Kenya, making his full marathon debut. He's right alongside the main pacemakers there, Edwin Kiptu, Frederick Kiptu as well. We'll get a glimpse of him, I'm sure, in a moment. Number 56, Inos uh, Kakopil. But doesn't that say a little bit about what, uh, how experience counts? Uh, Nagea, today it's his 11th marathon whereas the debutant running in his first race. Uh, here we're looking at Michel Butter, another very experienced marathon runner, 34 years of age, doing the pacemaking for the second group, so some way behind the leaders. Michel Butter, alongside him is Frank Futsalar. Well, Futsalar is here running his own race. He's got a best time of 2.16.58 2 that he set in Dusseldorf six months ago. So Michel Butter, his compatriot, is trying to help him, trying to help Futsalar and Ronald Schreuer to a good time, a personal best time that would be if they can maintain that pace to the end. We should say also from a Dutch perspective, the Qualification time for the Olympic Games in Tokyo next year for the men is 2.11.30. And, uh, well, of course, uh, Abdi Nagay has already run that. So we're really looking at uh, the likes of uh, Ronald Schur and Futsala, but uh, I think that's well beyond them. So I think there's nothing going to be particularly decided today in terms of qualification for Tokyo. And for those of you who like uh, to watch the, the national race unfold here, 2.29.30 is the qualification time for the women. Uh, the Dutch women, the national qualification time for Tokyo for next year. So approaching 14 kilometers, and it's at 14 kilometers, we will get our first glimpse proper of the Amstel River. And they will again turn sharp right, and they will be then along the towpath, and we'll see, well, some fabulous properties, Richard. I'm always uh, in awe of some of the residences we see literally on the banks of the Amstel. Beautiful place to live. And I hope we're going to see some of the, the beautiful windmills on the, uh, the banks of the Amstel. I've got friends here in Holland who are often down on the river and there we see the rowers out on the Amstel River used for some of the big competitions here in Holland. Holland is a rowing nation as well as a running nation and many big sports, hockey, and of course road cycling. We may even see some, uh, some fly borders later on. We'll expect, if you don't want to know what the fly borders are, we'll, you'll know as soon as you see them. It's quite a sight. So 14 kilometers and here we are. The runners have reached the banks of the Amstel. They'll stay on the river now for the next 10 kilometers on a, in a, this out and back stretch down to Audeker, which they reach at, at 20 kilometers and cross the bridge 
and then come back on the south side of the river back towards the business district and past the Johan Cruyff Arena. Big motorway, by the way, or the uh, it's part of the ring road, the A10, one of the main arteries into and out of, of Amsterdam. And they will go underneath that on the way out and again on the way back. Sunday morning in Amsterdam. Not a very pleasant place to be. Yes, we've heard talk that the organisers here in Amsterdam have been considering uh, changing the course, trying to make it even faster than it is. And one of the, the things under review is whether to take out this stretch along the river. I think the concern has been in recent years that when the weather hasn't been quite as kind as, as it is today, this is where they, the runners would feel the wind and wind means slower times, and organisers are always looking for ways to make their course faster. So it's possible that in the years ahead, we might see a, a change in the course, and that would be a, a bit of a pity in terms of seeing the, the sights of the, of the city, the windmills and the, the beautiful stretch that the runners have along the river. See the runners left of picture have gone underneath the, the A10, the main road into and out of Amsterdam, and the, the green area left of picture there, which will be on the right-hand side of the runners, is the uh, Amstel Park, one of the other main parks in in Amsterdam. Here's the view from the boat camp. So we've got cameras, we've got angles covered all over the place here in Amsterdam today. This is the uh, the picture from the river itself. Look at that, the side-on shot. And I always feel, Richard, it just gives us a really nice look at the individual, the cadence of the runners, the, the individual styles. You can tell a lot from that side-on view. I think you can also see how fast they're moving. Um, a marathon pace of, you know, four minutes and 50 seconds for the, for the mile is, is fast for any anyone to run at and, and to maintain that pace for 26 miles. I think when we see them on the inside on, we just see how fast they're running, which is quite different from how we're seeing them now from behind as they approach the 15 kilometer point. Yeah, going through 15 kilometers in uh, what, about 44.30. So they are outside course record pace at the moment. There we are. There's the aforementioned uh, flyboarders. I think you're a bit of a flyboarder aficionado. Talk us through this one, Richard. Well, um, <laughs> have you ever done it? I've never done it. No. Uh, I don't think I'll ever do it. But uh, I have. The only place I've seen it is here in Amsterdam. Uh, so that's about as as much as an expert as I am. What I do see now is that they are that hose connects into into the shoes that they're wearing, and uh, the the hose comes uh, with water being pumped through it from a boat that they're connected to. So here are some of the leading Kenyan and Ethiopian athletes. Maurice Kachaga running his second marathon. Daniel Kemboy, number 14, Bernard Koic, one of the experienced Kenyan athletes. And then some of the Ethiopian and Eritrean athletes. One of the uh, interesting debutants there, number eight, Abra Osman, uh, a very talented Eritrean athlete has come from the track. Was third in the World Junior Championships eight years ago, over 3,000 metres, and has gradually moved up the distances. Had a great race in the uh, Seven Hills race here in Holland 12 months ago when he finished second behind Joshua Ch Chalanga, who won in Doha just a few weeks ago, over 10,000 metres. Well, there's one of the famous sites, the windmill, the Rika Molen. Look at that, almost 400 years old. And Chris, I think that windmill is still practicing. Um, yeah, it's quite a sight and great support, actually, at this particular part of the course. And of course, the, the spectators, as always, will play their part. And goodness me, they played their part in Vienna last weekend on the uh, Hauptallee. 
in the Austrian capital to get Kipchoge home. Pacemakers still looking good, still working as a team, still with Edwin Kiptu there, centre of picture, directing proceedings. There's quite a lot of communication, isn't there, which is, which is good to see. He's encouraging, cajoling, he's making sure that his fellow pacemakers know their job and they stick to it. And you see the athletes with their drink bottles, quite strict rules about uh, drinking and passing bottles from athlete to athlete. The pacemakers are allowed to share drinks bottles, but the pacemakers are not allowed under IDA, IAAF rules to pass their drinks bottle to the other athletes who are finishing. In other words, if you're not finishing the race, you're not allowed to share bottles with athletes who are finishing the race. Just a, a little update on uh, Abdi Nagai. He's uh, very much now in the middle of that group. There he is, looking much more comfortable. And uh, we just got a, a glimpse there of number 17, Leonard Courier, former Kenyan, now US, just starting to drop off the, off the back of that group. Right of picture, he's just out of shot. And uh, maybe starting to struggle and starting to, to feel this pace. I think, Chris, you mentioned earlier how the gap between this leading group and the second group is so big that uh, that forces many of the athletes to kind of make a gamble. And uh, some of them then have to operate at a slightly faster pace than they want. Well, we talked about the weather, how important that is. The temperature is creeping up, but it's still very, very nice marathon conditions. They often say the optimum conditions are 50 degrees in Fahrenheit and that's ex about exactly what we've got 11 degrees and uh, I think it's likely to creep up a few more degrees over the next couple of hours but that still is very nice for marathon running would be perhaps more significant for the for the amateur runners the fun runners later on in the race but uh, I've been a looking really comfortable into his running now born in Somalia moved to the Netherlands at age six and stayed there here in the Netherlands for, for about four years. Then he moved to Syria and back to Somalia with family before returning to, to the Netherlands before uh, a little spell in Ethiopia. So, th so the nomadic label that he's got is, uh, is entirely justified. Here are the women coming through at 15 kilometers now. Just inside 50 minutes, so that's what, 49.29. Well, again, we'll bring you the official split on 15 kilometers uh, for the women. But again, uh, starting to spread out a little bit. And it is quite narrow as well. I'm not sure whether that would also be a factor, Richard, in, in the organizers. You mentioned them thinking about making changes. Wind, I, I agree, is, is the main one because they want to shave more more time off. But uh, it is pretty narrow on the banks of the Amstel. It here. is, and we, we saw that there in that leading women's group because you've got the got about seven or eight of the, the top women in, in the race alongside their pacemakers, but also alongside uh, male athletes who are aiming themselves for that 2.20, 2.22 finishing time. So it's the, the women's front group is as big as that men's group, if not slightly bigger. And um, so, as you say, quite, quite narrow, but uh, they're moving along nicely. Interesting to see Lynette Masai. She's also, like Abdi Nagea, coached by Patrick Sang, part of that elite group in Kapsabet. Yeah, very different terrain, of course. We saw earlier on the, uh, the ochre red trails up in the, uh, the Great Rift Valley in Kenya here of course uh, running today on on uh, tarmac but a nice pleasant surface and of course the shoes play a part as well technology what a view he's got of this uh, Amsterdam marathon unfolding there's the hose Chris if you want to know how it works <laughs> that's, that's where they get their power and again just to stress how quickly these guys are running this is the elite men's group we're talking uh, just outside 13 miles an hour, 21 kilometers an hour. To sustain that for as long as they do is quite extraordinary. There is the aforementioned number 56 there, the debutant from Kenya. 
So back to the front of the women's race, Mimi Bellata just running behind Maria Sionescu, who's a, a pacemaker. In the middle there, Ficardo Girma, Ethiopian pacemaker. And uh, Shashu Insermu, last year's second placer. She's also just off the back of running on the shoulder of the pacemakers. And as we've seen before, another Ethiopian F5, sorry, F15, I think that's uh, Degitu Asmeru, the young 20-year-old making her debut here in Amsterdam. So both groups, the, uh, the leading men and the leading women, both safely through 15 kilometres. There'll be a few more kilometres to go until the most southerly point of the course. That's at almost exactly 20 kilometres, just before halfway. And then they'll turn at uh, Adeger back north. They'll cross over a bridge over the Amstel, and then they'll make their way back on the opposite side of the river, north back towards the centre of Amsterdam. Is Abdi again just that little gap which we're not uh, concerned at all about he's just uh, giving himself a little bit of uh, breathing space at the back of that group but uh, it's been quite a he's packed a lot into his 30 years hasn't he in terms of his travel and where he's based and, and it's quite an extraordinary story just from a human interest point of view. yeah I mean he's a great guy I think um, yeah you talked about him as being a bit of a nomad and I know that I think he has done some training uh, in, in Ethiopia, um, he, I think he was uh, did some training with, with Mofar at one stage, but uh, has very much settled now in, in Kapsabet uh, with Kipchoge's group and, and, and seems to be very happy there. And we can see that his results have, uh, have borne fruit. I mean, he ran his fastest time over the half marathon earlier this year in uh, Marugami, 60-24, and he, he's now really starting to think of himself as in the in that top bracket and uh, it would be a, a huge achievement for him here to make the podium um, i know people have talked about him as a e even possible winner which would be a huge achievement um, but so often we've seen him in, in amsterdam uh, just going for a time and he's achieved some some great things uh, he, he achieved his olympic qualifying time here in amsterdam uh, four years ago and then came back last year and ran a best time. But today, it's not just about the time. It's also to see whether he can at least get on the podium. Running very, very sensibly and controlled. Yeah, there he is at the back of the group there. Centre of picture. Uh, and the ethos, the work e the worth e e ethic that uh, is laid down by Patrick Sanner and that group. It's a really close-knit group, isn't it? And there are no egos at all, including the great Elliot Kipchoge. We were saying yesterday, uh, last weekend in Vienna, that uh, they all take their turn of doing menial tasks, menial for many people, chopping vegetables, even a rotor for cleaning the toilets. And, 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 and however big you are, however big the name, everybody takes their turn. There's a, a gardening duties as well. It's a really close-knit group where everybody plays a role and that nobody is more important than the other. And that's all feeds into why that group is so successful under the tutelage of uh, Patrick Sang. So to be part of that group, I mean, for goodness sake, Richard, to have the world record holder in the marathon and the world record in the half marathon as your two training partners, or two of your training partners, that's, that's pretty special. They, they work together. Uh, no one is, uh, is superior to the other. And uh, it's, that's, that's not just in, in the duties, it, it's in their attitude. Uh, they, they help each other, and I think uh, obviously Kipchoge's uh, success and uh, has, has rubbed off on so many others, uh, including uh, Nagea. And that's no, no, no surprise why he wants to stay part of that group. Yeah, it's a terrific formula. And of course, uh, Kipchoge himself lives in in some luxury, just a few kilometres uh, away from uh, Kaptabet, but uh, chooses to, to stay with the group in uh, in less luxurious surroundings because it's important to be part of the, of the training group. Through 19 kilometres then, approaching the 20k mark, and they're just a kilometre away from turning over the Amstel. They'll take a, a left turn over the bridge and then they'll double back on themselves. And psychologically, that means they'll be 
very close to the second half of the race. There is there is the bridge that they're going to to cross at uh, Oudekerk. Well known in Amsterdam and probably throughout Holland. It's a very old village. Oudekerk, meaning old church. I'm not sure whether we're going to see the the church which gives the village its name, but. Um, as we've seen already with the windmills, so much of uh, Holland's history is traced back to the 17th century. There we are at the turnaround point. So any headwind, any head breeze, as we've been describing it in these last five or six kilometers that they've had will now disappear as they do a sharp 180 degree turn first of all over the bridge here at Adekech and then another left hand again to make their way back onto the the opposite side of the Amstel and start their way back north and the next milestone of course will be uh, 20 kilometers and then very quickly after that we will get a halfway split and it is interesting just watching Nagea at the back of that group sometimes he is about three or four metres back from the group and then sometimes, particularly there at the turns, when the group has to just naturally slow down as it goes around the corner, he can just catch up those few strides and then feel very much a part of the group. So Nagea really showing his experience in taking advantage of the pace that's being set by the group, keying off them but not getting at all involved right at the front of that group. As we're seeing from the, the debutant in the orange vest, number 56. Mentioned there, number four, Bernard Koech. Has the second fastest time in the field, having gone under two hours and five minutes in Dubai six years ago. So approaching the 20 kilometer mark there you can see the black arch that they will uh, cross under here it is so we'll give you a, an unofficial 20k split so comfortably inside the 60 minutes going through in what about 59 48 for 20 kilometers should also explain there are 10 tables aren't there for drinks we were at the athletes technical meeting the briefing yesterday and uh, the number will designate which table they get their their drink from so another the well-known windmills I think we translate that as the swan Min windmill that swan another of the famous windmills almost 400 years old So one of the Kenyan athletes uh, possibly starting to struggle a little bit, Lucas Rotich. But uh, the drink stations often starts to put gaps between athletes. And the question is whether it's a, a serious gap or whether it's just been caused by how the athletes pick up their drinks. But I think, Chris, you were mentioning about how narrow this uh, part of the course is. And we saw that very definitely there as the athletes picked up their drinks at the fourth drink station, 20 kilometers, that there was a little bit of pushing and shoving and sidestepping. And yet, yeah, Lucas Rotich, number nine, he does seem to be, well, he's got a 10 or 15 meters to catch up if he's going to regain contact with the group. But still about 16 athletes, I think, in that leading group being led by the pacemakers. Official 20 kilometer split there, you can see 59.50, so they are appreciably outside Lawrence Chirono's course record from last year. Again, that gap at the back from Abdi Aguirre's perspective, he's just uh, settled down and quite wisely taking on plenty of fluid, and I'm sure now he can just work his way back and latch onto the, uh, the back of that group. Uh, and, and the ability to take on board liquid and fluid, clearly very important. Uh, to sustain this sort of effort through, throughout 42 kilometers. But th the physical act of doing it, Richard, is, is so underestimated. And 
you think back to the likes of Mo Farah when he made the transition from track to road. He said he'd practiced it. He said he knew it was an important part. But you think back to the London Marathon where he made his full debut. He got it terribly wrong. And even in his second marathon from memory, couldn't find the right drink, had to go back. He was seen remonstrating, I remember, at one point with the officials saying, look, you haven't given me the right bottle. It was actually, frankly, a, a bit of a mess. And he realized after that experience that actually it doesn't matter how fit you are, how finely tuned all the altitude training, a really important component part of running a marathon is the ability to pick up, find your drink and pick it up and drink it. I remember watching uh, Mo in, in his first few marathons and I was always amazed that he hadn't, uh, well, perfected or he, he hadn't sort of uh, learned how to do that. I remember when I moved up to the marathon, I was, um, I put a, a drinks table out on the training routes that I used to run on and, and practice it. So here we go, through halfway and the the athletes are certainly uh, going a little bit slower than we were expecting. We were expecting a halfway split of around 62.30, but it looked like they were just outside 63 minutes. Yeah, we'll bring you a halfway split uh, as soon as we get that officially done, but I think you're right. Uh, Lawrence Chirono again last year went through in uh, 62.11, and his kilometres per minute were, were, were absolutely metronomic, around 2.55 down to 2.54. Only one of his kilometres was... Uh, was at 3:02. At 3:02, so he was uh, he was in fine form last year. So back to the women's race, and uh, they're approaching the the bridge at Aldeca. Still about eight or nine elite women in that group, with pacemakers and some of the other male runners Mimi Bellata has been right at the front of that group from the start running just off the shoulder of Marios Ionescu the pacemaker so yeah, all the main protagonists are in there as they hit the bridge and they cross the Amstel and they will hit the uh, 20 kilometer mark very shortly and there's a, a great glimpse of <laughs> some of the other runners of course plenty of opportunities if you're a decent club runner maybe a, a sub three hour mar marathon runner and uh, well is that the first sign that Abdi is starting to lose touch with this group going through in exactly 63 minutes for halfway yes so quite a lot slower than we were expecting and then what the organizers had uh, had hoped for but um, it's still possible that they could come home fast. I think one of the the factors, if they are to do that, is going to be how far these pacemakers. And we talked about Edwin Kiptu's role as the role as the the chief pacemaker, if you like. He's now taken over right at the front of the race. Well, here's Abdi Nagea. Question is, uh, he's asking the motorbike camera to give him a bit more space, but. The question really is whether he can close that 10 to 15 metre gap. Yeah, five seconds off the rest of the group, he was through halfway. And it's just a question, and we, we flagged it up, didn't we, very early in the race, whether if he did get dropped, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lonely place, isn't it? You've been there, I've been there, where you're, you're not part of a group, whatever time you're running, it can be soul-destroying to be right out in isolation. So the women's... Race, they're just approaching now 20 kilometers. And they're gonna go through 20 kilometers, 106.20. And to me, that looks like they're certainly on schedule for course record pace. They were hoping to go through halfway in 70.30. There's a good example of how not to pick up your drinks bottle. You don't really want to be losing a few seconds and you certainly don't want to lose your stride. But here we are, back at the men's race on the right of the screen there, Edwin Kiptu. And we're down to two pacemakers now, it's worth saying, of the three. The other Kiptu, Frederick, has uh, has dropped out. So it's now Kiptu and uh, for Edwin Kiptu and uh, Noah Kipkemboy who are leading the way in terms of pacing. 
We've talked a lot about course records. Well, I reckon that uh, the women are more likely to break the course record. There's been a lot of talk. Um, it's been seven years since there's been a course record in the women's race here in Amsterdam. You have to go back to Meseret Hailu's winning performance here. But I think that today, this year, the strength of that women's field and the way they're running much more sensibly than last year will give them a very good chance of uh, getting close to that 2.21.09 time. Worrying from a Dutch perspective because that gap is getting bigger and bigger between this main group here, who are now back on the, the right-hand bank of the Amstel, making their way north towards the centre of Amsterdam. And, uh, well, that gap, I reckon, now is uh, 20 metres plus between this leading group and uh, Abdi Nagea. There he is. And uh, he's got to make sure that he can just keep them in his sights, even allowing for the foreshortening there. That is a gap that uh, looks to me to be getting slightly bigger. Yes, I think the hope for Abdi is that he can sort of come through this, this bad patch. I, I think we can only describe it as a bad patch because... He'd been talking of uh, staying with that leading group for as long as possible. So I don't think this will have been part of his race plan. But at the same time, he's got lots of experience. And if he is having a bad patch, then it's probably best for him to, to try and recover, keep his rhythm, uh, and then try to work his way back, uh, back towards the leaders. So through... 23 kilometers and uh, well in just under 10 kilometers time the real racing will start that's for sure but still plenty of big names in there as you would expect it's uh, it's what happens from 30k onwards that that becomes interesting and i hope you're enjoying these pictures from our brilliant boat cam cruising along the amstel itself and giving us plenty of varied shots of uh, of this wonderful race unfolding. There is uh, the mass starting to come through. But there is Abdi, the Dutch record holder, the Dutch champion. Still looking OK, even though he's uh, been set adrift, Richard, from that main group, he's still looking pretty comfortable. He's got a very nice, uh, smooth running action, nice mouth and runners uh, action. And yes, I, th I think you're right, if he can keep the rhythm going, uh, there's another Kenyan athlete who's just dropped off that leading group, so at least he's got someone to, to target. As the women go through halfway, well, they are actually ahead of course record schedule. 70 minutes and one second, so that would bring them home a minute faster than the course record. Yeah, they are, they are significantly quicker. Meseret Hailu, back in 2012, you mentioned there, the, the course record holder went through in uh, 71.15 back in 2012. So we'll bring you confirmation of that halfway split for the women, but it was just outside 70 minutes, so they are on course for a course record. Well, that leading group in the men's race is just getting smaller and smaller, down to around 12 ath athletes now, two pacemakers, and that's another of the athletes who's Kenyan athlete Nicholas Rotich who's struggling to to stay with the leaders and this is significant isn't it Richard you mentioned that really it's all about having a target and, and the target the obvious target for Abdi at the moment is the man in front of him Nicholas Rotich and if you can just pick him off and then maybe hope that one of the others in that main group also starts to struggle and then he can start to pick him off as well a little bit of communication there between the two athletes they are team members of well, of course, they, uh, they train together, so they know each other well. And if they can start working together, perhaps as a, as a, as a pair, uh, and, and start to reel in that leading group, but eventually, if this gap doesn't get too big, there'll be other people in that main group who will also perhaps start to, to drop off. It can work both ways, can't it? If, if the leading group are working at a, at a faster pace that these two can't, can't maintain then that gap will get bigger they can they can stay together and I think Abdi is aware of that that uh, as much as he can enjoy the company of uh, one of his training partners from the NM running team he's got to keep an eye on on that leading group which is about 25 30 meters down the road and not let that gap get any bigger so through 
24 kilometers and going back under the uh, the a10 the ring road in and out of amsterdam so they've made light work of that and uh, just the other side of this motorway decent uh, crowds of course as well using every vantage point they'll hit the 25 kilometer split well there's the british athlete ross skelton i think he's got his own schedule to work to i think he's probably aiming for around 220 and we we said that the the women went through bang on that schedule halfway 70.01 there's uh, a designated pacemaker marios ionescu in wearing number 23 and he's probably aware that they went through a little bit faster than was asked for by the organizers so ionescu there's a good chance that he's going to stay in the race for another 10, maybe 15 kilometers helping these women. But it's still a very big group of women. Mimi Bellata, Shashu Insermu, Asmera, Gebru, the Ethiopian. So approaching 25 kilometers in the men's race here in Amsterdam. And uh, just a sense here that uh, one of the pacemakers, Noah Kipkemboy there, on the left of picture, just starting to uh, open his stride a little bit more. And that group, you know, is starting just to splinter a little bit. Not quite as compact as it was before. And they're really starting to put down the hammer here. Number 14, you can see there, Daniel Kemboy is just behind the two pacemakers. We've got uh, Bernard Koech, also Kenyan, and of course Kenya has dominated this race. So 15 of the last 17 years in the men's race have been won by Kenyans, and the other two inevitably Ethiopians. And, uh, well, here is uh, Andy Gay, who is uh, a Dutchman with his training partner alongside him. And we'll just try and get confirmation of how big that gap is. Yes, we might see as they go through 25K, how far back those, those two athletes are. Get a nice overhead shot. 25k 114.26. Well, that gap back to Nagaya seems to be quite big now. This part of the course where they just turn the corner, Abdi Nagaya is going to actually lose sight. So that's about 17 18 seconds. So more just over 100 meters and getting some advice from the motorbike riders but that is now quite a, a big gap and we're in this section of the course as they head towards the business district where probably the, the fewest number of spectators on the course they've really got to run their own race stay focused and Abdi Nagea hopefully will come out of that that bad patch that he, he, he he's, he's probably in now but to try and make his way back towards the leaders. And Chris, as you were saying, that leading group is now starting to splinter. Edwin Kiptu, the experienced pacemaker, right at the front. And I think we've lost the, the other pacemaker. So it is just down to Kiptu. Yeah, three pacemakers down to one now as they uh, make their way towards the 26 kilometer mark and these next 10 kilometers because once they hit 35 it really heralds the start of the the, the home straight if you like this the last seven kilometers where possibly they'll have a little bit of a tailwind and there's confirmation of the uh, the 25k splits 64 24 in fact and uh, that compares to 63 49 the course record by uh, set by Lawrence Chirono uh, last year so they're what about 40 seconds outside course record pace, in contrast to the women who are comfortably inside the women's course record. Yeah, so about half a minute outside Lance Chirono's course record schedule. Course record set last year, as we said. The Eritrean Abra Osman is still in that leading group, number 18, as is Vincent Kipchumba has come into this race off the back of a, a big win in Vienna earlier this year, ran his PB there to a 6.56. So he definitely one of the one of the favourites if he can repeat his 
victory from earlier this year. Well, Amsterdam still, of course, uh, going about its business on a Sunday morning. 26 kilometers now through. Another opportunity to take on fuel. Most of these uh, will take it, I'm sure, at this stage. There is a, there's a Rotic. So all the big names are in there. Dick Cesar, number three, who was third last year. Bernard Koech, number four from, uh, from Kenya. Elisa Rotic, we saw a, a glimpse of him there. There he is, just on the shoulder of the pacemaker. Abdina Gay, we, we, we think, is, uh, what, about 100 metres or so off this uh, leading group. Tadu Abate, Vincent Kipchumba, we just saw as well. And Abra Osman, one of the, uh, the debutants, also in this leading group. So, Abdi just picking up his drink at just beyond 25 kilometres. You can actually see, Richard, that the second pacemaker, Noah Kipkenboy, has dropped back and is now essentially pacing the two athletes who are off this leading group. Well, that could be a, a big help for Nagea, give him some chance of getting back in contact with this group or at least give him some hope of, of picking off the athletes as they as they drop off this group, which you can see now is happening as uh, Kip2 really stretches them out, doing a great job as pacemaker. So women approaching 25 kilometers right of picture with their dedicated pacemakers doing a, a terrific job. All the, the main names, the big names in the women's race are still in there and they are inside course record pace and that's uh, that's quite a group there isn't it we've got what about six or so we obviously got some uh, excellent elite men in there as well for company as well as the pacemakers but in terms of the elite women we've got a group there of what about seven or eight maybe nine of the of the top women all still in there together yes yeah, right in the middle of that group we're just seeing f2 as Mera Gebru I, I think she's definitely one of the favorites uh, came finished third here last year and has been training really well she was telling me yesterday uh, in her home region of Maicho which is right in the north of Ethiopia very high altitude she says her training grounds are above 3,000 meters and uh, has come into this race with a great performance in Paris where she ran her PB 222.52 so the men's race. Well, we're down to a group of uh, eight or nine now, and the latest to be uh, dropped, or at least uh, finding it tough there, I think is number 16, Batesva Getahun, the youngster from Ethiopia. I oh, know he's, uh, he's still there, I beg his pardon, he's still there alongside uh, Solomon uh, Dexisa, the number three, who was uh, third here last year. So they're still part of this uh, this leading group but isn't Kip2 doing a, a terrific job there so Dixie sir that typical grimace that we've seen so often in his races uh, we saw it last year as he battled his way to a third place finish I saw it in Mumbai uh, back at the start of 2018 when he won his first big city race so Dixie sir one of the three Ethiopians in that group. Also need to mention number seven in the blue vest, Tadu Abata. Had a great race here last year and only faded really in the last 5K when he, he got a stitch as they headed back past Rice Museum. So three Ethiopians and five Kenyans running behind Edwin Kiptu. There's Tadu Abata. Looking smooth, isn't he? Tall athlete, only 22, seventh last year. I'm told, we may not see it today, I'm told he has a very interesting, entertaining victory celebration, which we saw in, uh, in Hamburg. You mentioned those filthy conditions. And there he is, look, just as we start speaking about him, he just moves ahead and is now just slipstreaming behind uh, the pacemaker, Edwin Kiptu. Quite a bit taller than the uh, the other athletes in that field. Well, there's a, an update on the weather, 12 degrees. So, as we said, the temperature creeping upwards, 
but at the moment that is still very good, very low wind and very very little wind, three miles an hour from the southeast. I think um, the organisers were hoping uh, there was some talk of the, the wind direction changing later this morning uh, to an easterly direction, which would be a huge help as the uh, runners turn west uh, in the last seven kilometres. So that leading group, well, I've seen this so many times in Amsterdam, Edwin Kiptu doing a great job as pacemaker. It looks as though he's focusing on getting the athletes through to 30K. Well, five kilometers further back, the women going through 25K. Yes, women through 25K in almost exactly 123. They're still over a minute inside course record pace in the women's race. So the story in Amsterdam in 2019 as this race approaches the latter stages is that we could be heading for a new course record in the women's race. Negea, number six, running with the pacemaker. Noah Kipkemboy, who's actually dropped back, and you can see that gap now is about, I would estimate, 250, 300 metres back from the leaders. But Negea, well, he's got the assistance of, uh, of a pacemaker. The question is, can he make any inroads into that gap? Well, this is the size of the gap facing Abdi Nagea. And it's an appreciable one, but he, he will have half a chance with the pacemaker on his shoulder. It's also worth mentioning that Nicholas Rotic, who he was running with uh, for a while, isn't with him anymore. So Abdi is now just with the dedicated pacemaker, Noah Kip Kemboy. So nine athletes in this leading group alongside the pacemaker, Edwin Kiptu. Number 11, Maurice Gachaga, running his second marathon, has run 16 half marathons in his career. Started out as a 10K roadrunner, has had huge success in Cape Town over the last three years where he's, he's won that big 12 kilometer race three times and won it again this year in 2019. So there's our leading group, Dixisa of Ethiopia, Tadu Abata of Ethiopia, Batesva Tesfun and Fentahun Hunenyao. So four Ethiopians and five Kenyans following the Kenyan pacemaker Edwin Kiptu. Two more athletes, as you can see, have dropped off that group quite appreciably and they will provide, there they are, they will provide the next target, if you like, for Abdi, if you can start to, to try and get back to them. There he is, he's, uh, he's doing a fine job, isn't he, Noah Kip Kemboy? Nothing like having just somebody to drive you on. And it looks as though Abdi is going to be able to, uh, to reel in one of the uh, runners who was part of that original group of nine. Well, that elite women's group is still very, very big and being helped by their pacemakers. Uh, there's Wokanish Alamu, F8, and Shashu Insermu. Ooh, and this is 25K drink station. Well, they're just beyond 25K, but so important for the, for the women to get their drinks bottles. And a little bit of congestion. Yeah, that was a bit untidy, wasn't it, in certain cases? So important to take on fluid. I just wonder if it's, you know, that the size of that group is not making it easy for them to identify their bottles and, and reach the table. It looks like most of them have got the bottles. There's Shashu in Sermu. Number four. And meanwhile, you can see how quiet this stretch of the, the course is as they head up towards 30k. Yeah, just coming through uh, another of the parks, Fencer Park, a smaller park 
in Amsterdam approaching the 30 kilometer mark and and it's th at this point that we may well see this group of nine start to splinter further who is going to make a move and and for how long Richard I wonder will Edwin Kip to stay in the race will he will he draw a line at 30k or will he continue I I'd be very surprised if he goes beyond 30k I mean as a as an athlete in this race, if, if you've got a pacemaker who takes you to 25, you're happy. If you've got an athlete, if you're a pacemaker who's going to take you to 30, you're more than happy. So I think that the athletes behind him will be expecting that uh, Kip2 will step aside. I suppose the only thing that they might be hoping is that because the, the pace was a little bit slower than was predicted, in that first half it may be that uh, kip 2 will have the energy just to keep going for a few more kilometers but we can see now that kip 2 is really striding out and wanting to perhaps make sure that they get back on schedule he'll have got um, splits in his mind for 25k that they've already passed and now they're getting very close to that 30k point so I think he's picked it up, you know, Richard. I think he's gained some time here. They were over 30 seconds outside course record pace earlier in the race. And we'll bring you a 30k split, but they're not far off, you know. Chirono's 30k split was 128.58, and he's got them pretty much back on track here. Well, that is impressive pacemaking, isn't it? And they're through 30k, and Kiptu is saying, I've done my work, it's all up to you now. And, well, that is, I would call that professional pacemaking. Well, given a time to, to reach at, at 30K was, was a few seconds shy of it, only because they were a little bit slow for, through the first half. And now, here we are. This is the second group. Noah Kipkenboy, the second pacemaker, staying with Abdi Nagea. So we're, we're looking at about 50, 55 seconds, the gap between the leaders and Abdi Nagea. Yep, he's doing well. And again, it's just a question of whether Noah Kip Kemboy, the, the second pacemaker, will he continue and try and drag Abdi around a little bit further or will he think, no, my work is done? And the answer to that is the latter. He's on his own now, Abdi. So all the pacemaking duties are complete in the men's race. And, uh, well, through some terrific pacemaking in the men's race, we should really pay tribute to Edwin Kiptu, who's done a fine job there. And he's put them right back on schedule, just outside course record pace. So the women inside course record, here we are, confirmation of that. And they are just simply 10 seconds now outside course record. 129.05, that uh, leading group of nine going through 30k. Yeah, four Ethiopians and five Kenyans. And this is where the race is over the last 12 kilometers. And some of those leading athletes we've been talking about, Solomon Dixis is there, Tadu Abata is there, Bernard Koech of Kenya is there, Elisha Rotic. And uh, the debutant, Abra Osman, 20 seconds down on the leading group. So the Eritrean, He'll be an athlete that uh, Abdi Nagea will have his eyes on. We can just see that uh, second group about just over 100 metres down the road from the leaders. Yeah, Abdi, 53 seconds down at 30 kilometres. So uh, that's the gap we've got to keep an eye on uh, here. So no pacemakers now. Their job is done. And it's uh, Elisa Rotic then, as the racing starts, there is Abdi, of course, he's lost his dedicated pacemaker, but he has moved ahead of the athlete uh, wearing uh, number 19, that uh, is uh, Asmari. Still looking pretty comfortable, isn't he? He's, he's almost a minute down, but he's still looking full of running. <laughs> and uh, these uh, spectators are just going to show us exactly how fast those leading athletes are running at number five. Hello, Elisha Rotic, we've talked about him, won four out of his last six marathons with the best time of 2.06.12. Well, Nagea ran his best time in Rotterdam six months ago, and even in Rotterdam he, he had hamstring problems uh, yet, and yet managed to hang on 
after a very, very fast first half in Rotterdam to a, a, a well, a, a PB performance, 206.17. He may not be able to repeat that here this year, but um, let's see if he can stay within contact or within eyesight of the, of the leaders. Well, this is fascinating. There is uh, Dick Cita with that, uh, as Richard mentioned, that uh, pained expression. There is how he's performing against the, the course record of uh, Lawrence Chirono set here 12 months ago. Well, that is fascinating, isn't it, Chris, to see how they came back on schedule just seven seconds down on Chirono's course schedule at 30 kilometres, having been 50 seconds down at the halfway point. So that 10 kilometres between 20 and 30 kilometres where Kiptu, the pacemaker, really took charge of the pace, has really picked up the pace and, and given them a chance of getting back and getting close to Chirona's course record set here last year, 204.06. And that, I think, Richard, that injection of pace to put them back onto course record is probably the main reason why Abdi finds himself so far back. He, he simply couldn't live with that injection of pace set by Edwin Kiptu, who was taking his pacemaking duties very seriously. And uh, whatever fee he's been paid today, he's earned every penny because that is outstanding pacemaking. But it's fairly safe to say, I think, that uh, our winner today of this Amsterdam Marathon in the men's race will come from one of this group here. We've got a group of nine, five Kenyans and four Ethiopians all battling it out here in the, uh, in the last, what, 10 kilometres or so of this race. Just over 10 kilometres to go. And as we'll see, soon see, this is the part of the, the course where they come back into the city centre. So they're going to get a lot more support from the spectators. In a couple of miles, they'll turn west and head back towards the Amstel River and the famous sites, the Cadet Theatre and the Rijksmuseum. They won't be interested in the sites, but it does mean that that's where they'll get a lot more support from the spectators. There in the middle of that group, Tadu Abata. And actually some of the lesser known athletes, Batesva Getahun. Just 21 years of age, has run 11 half marathons, but today is his debut at the marathon. But it's the more experienced Kenyan athletes, number five, Elisa Rotic. He's run 12 marathons already, and he's the one who's striking out at the front of this group. Well, you can get a real sense of just the speed now. The racing has started, there's no doubt about it. So we're looking for, for signs, we're looking for the vulnerabilities, if you like. Who is going to be the next to find this pace too punishing as they work their way past 32 kilometres? And uh, once they hit 35, they are very much on the home straight, if you like, the final seven kilometres of the race. And uh, if the gloves aren't off by then, they certainly will be once they get into that... Uh, that final straight. It's pretty straight, isn't it? Back through the centre of, of Amsterdam. Well, it looks to me as though Rotic is wanting to really string them out. Uh, we mentioned about his experience of winning races. There's one of the Kenyans who's been with the leaders but is now starting to struggle a little bit, Bernard Koec. Actually, his last race of any kind was at the start of last year, so he's done well in some ways to stay with the leaders, but he's starting to struggle a little bit as his compatriot, Rotic, picks up the pace at the front of that group. Really winding it up, and you can see the crowd and the noise and the atmosphere on the course increasing with every kilometre as they approach the centre of Amsterdam. And, of course, that also plays a part. We saw it in Vienna last weekend. Elliot Kipchoge said the spectators and the... The atmosphere on the course was such an integral part to achieving what he, he achieved there. Lots of communication there. Nice Rotic there, just having a, a good look round. Dick Sita, he looks slightly uncomfortable, doesn't he, uh, Richard? But that's just his way. 
I don't think he is particularly uncomfortable, but he's got this slightly ragged, very wide arm carriage. Number three, we're talking about left of picture. Yeah, he's a very determined runner, but uh, in some ways a little bit ungainly, uh, that sort of wide arm carriage. Uh, but he's got a big heart and uh, very, very determined. Well, here's Nagea. We can see from those shots that he has lost lost eye contact with that leading group. So it looks to me as though he's about maybe 300 metres, 400 metres back from the leaders. Still looking smooth, but he's got a very tough last quarter of the race, running very much on his own. I suppose you can only hope that some of those leaders, we saw Bernard Kerich starting to drop off that leading group. Well, if, if Kerich can drop back, uh, or, or be dropped in, in such a way that uh, Nagea can start to key off him and uh, gain back some distance. So here's the leading group through 33 kilometres under the railway line here that goes into uh, the main station. And they've got what? Less than two kilometres to essentially what is the, the last major turn left along uh, Zeeburg Dake. And once they hit uh, 35 kilometres, they will be very much into the uh, the home straight. Well, that's another Kenyan, Daniel Kemboy, who's taken over at the front of the race, got a PB of 207.54, so he's operating at a pace faster than he's ever run before. They're operating at about 204, 205 pace, and Daniel Kemboy has been with that leading group from the start. He's taken over in second place. Number eight, Vincent Kipchumba. Women approaching 30 kilometers, so we'll see if they're still comfortably inside course record pace. We're looking for a time of around 141.06. They are comfortably inside that. 139, what? 139.40. So they are still really impressing here. There is uh, number eight. Workanesh Alimu, who's maybe starting to feel the pace here. This is punishing. So back with the men. There's Solomon Dixise. He's been in this position last year when he stayed right at the front of the race until the last couple of miles. So Dixita, one of the race favourites, still with that group. I think there were three other Ethiopian athletes in that group of eight, including Tadu Abata, just running on the heels of number eight, Elisa Rotic. So, number eight. Yeah, Kip Chumba there is just centre of picture looking very, very comfortable. And uh, you, you can tell actually that Bernard Koech there, who we thought was being dropped, is still yes, he's still working hard, isn't he? He's still just on the coattails of this group. He looks the most vulnerable of the nine to be dropped, but he's working really hard and he hasn't been dropped yet. That is interesting, isn't it? I think um, possibly when Daniel Kemboy went to the front, the pace might have slowed a little bit. And that leading group is now nine athletes, as you say, Chris. Bernard Koech has worked his way back onto the group. There is uh, Abdin Agaya. He looks as though he's running much more comfortably. And we're just lo looking for confirmation that actually the sole figure who we could see in the distance from that le leading group was Abdi himself. So Abdi Nagea, he's outside, uh, well, a minute down on the Dutch record, his own Dutch record set in Rotterdam, 206.17. And when he went through 30K, he was more than a minute outside that. So I think the best Abdi can hope for is that he gets close to the time, his best time for the Amsterdam course, a 208 time. But uh, I don't think he's going to get close to his Dutch marathon record set six months ago in Rotterdam. So approaching 35 kilometers, and this group is still there, packed together with five Kenyans and four Ethiopians. The pacemakers have gone. Kipchumba starting to take over duties, and also 
Daniel Kemboy. So it's the two Kenyans who are doing the lion's share of the pacemaking. And once they get to 35 kilometers, well, we can see the racing really start. The handbrake will come off and just a little gap opening up. It's once again Bernard Koech who's looking the most likely to be dropped off the back of this group. But as long as he can stay there, he will uh, fancy his chances. Keep an eye out for number five. We mentioned him, Alicia Rotic, who has this really impressive finish. He has a devastating final sprint. It's just a question of when he decides to unleash it. Often we've seen, Richard, haven't we? Fundle Park is the time when we see somebody make a really decisive move. Well, we saw that last year with, with Chirono. Three of the athletes came into Fondle Park together, and that's when the hammer went down and Chirono made his winning move. And, yep, we wouldn't be at all surprised if that happened again this year. So, 35 kilometres, they're approaching the bridge over the Amstel River. I say it's a bridge, it's, uh, it's a flat bridge, but they, they cross the water and then head down towards the Rijksmuseum. So, the penultimate drink station at 35 kilometres. And as we've seen already, this is where the group spreads out. Bernard Koech, who a few minutes ago was dropping off that leading group. He's working hard again to stay with them at 35 kilometers. But number 16, there's the debutant, Ethiopian, Batesva Getahun. He's working really hard to stay. Oh, he's just a few, few strides back now from that group, seven athletes. 35 kilometers through and they've slowed right down. They're now over 30, kilom over 30 seconds outside course record pace. And the, uh, the latest, as we suspected to be possibly dropped is this man from Kenya, Bernard Koech, the 31 year old. And that gap is starting to grow. Is it just another byproduct of the, of the drink station? We often see gaps appear and then they can be closed quite quickly. But this is getting towards the serious end, the business end of the race. Lots of checking of watches. Alicia Rotic, remember, he's the one with the devastating kick. Number five, centre of picture, still looking very comfortable. I also like the look of uh, Tado Abate there, number seven. He's just looked so, so smooth throughout the whole race. But is this group of nine, Richard, starting to become a group of eight? And here's Abdi going through 35 kilometres. Well, it's been a, lot, a very tough last five kilometers and he's got seven kilometers of running quite possibly on his own. He'll be looking down the road, seeing if any of the athletes are coming back to him. But we can see there in those pictures that it's a very open road, getting a lot, a lot of support from the spectators out here in Amsterdam. Back to the women's race and that, um, that group is still a sizable group, but there's probably only, I think, five women. Yeah, yeah. Very interestingly, Asmera Gebru, one of the, the favorites. She's now running behind the pacemakers. Alongside her, Degitu Asmero, the debutant. Um, just seeing if Linet Masai is still there. Well, Mimi Bellata, F3. She's in that group. So 20 minutes of running, less than 20 minutes of running left for these elite men in Amsterdam on a really calm, cool Sunday morning. And it's uh, Kenya and Ethiopia, as we would expect. And here's confirmation of uh, those splits. So 144.07. It was, uh, they went through 35 kilometers. Well, one of the athletes we haven't mentioned, number 24, Fanta Hun Hunenyao, is having a great race. He has only once run the marathon distance and got, got a best time of 2.14.26. So he's going to take minutes off his, his best time uh, the way he's running, he's still in that leading group of nine athletes, eight athletes, sorry, four Ethiopians and four Kenyans. 
through 36 kilometers and the next uh, significant landmark will be going over the uh, Toronto Brugge. It's uh, quite a sizable bridge over the Amstel once again. And once they get through there, that'll be uh, into the final uh, few kilometers. So Dixisa, Solomon Dixisa, he's still in that group, but uh, he's at the back of the group. And I guess the question now is whether he can really hang on. That grimace that we've seen pretty much from the start of the race. Well, there's not much point in, in looking at the watch because it's now all about a, a battle between those leading eight athletes. So Koech has gone. And we're down to a group of eight, four Ethiopians, four Kenyans. And it's the Kenyans who are looking pretty comfortable here. That's the scene in central Amsterdam, past the, uh, the Amstel Hotel, one of the uh, iconic hotels in the center of the city. Yeah, I think the Amstel River and the hotel and the Theatre Carré came into its own at the end of the 19th century. Five Star Hotel since 1867. I think the architect was the same architect as for the famous Carré Theatre, which um, became famous also at the, I think it was in the 1880s. And the athletes now just approaching the bridge that takes them over the Amstel River. They're the eight athletes. Interesting, isn't it, Chris, that it's, it seems to be the Kenyans who are doing all the, the leading. Tadu Abata, the, um, the young Ethiopian, has run a great race. And actually, on the far side there, number three, Solomon Dixisa, a few minutes ago, who was at the back of that group, well, he's really moved himself to the front. I wonder whether he's thinking about making a move. And it is the Ethiopian now, Dixisa, who is at the front of that group yep. as they just take this, the slight descent off the bridge, heading down towards the Rijks Museum. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? The racing has started, certainly. It looks as though they're out for a really lively Sunday run. Many training partners in that group, but we're down to a group of eight. You can see how quickly Bernard Koech has been dropped there, through 37 kilometres, so nine has definitely become eight here. Vincent uh, Kipchumba there, number eight, the tall figure, but uh, keep an eye on Tadu Abate, number seven in the, uh, the blue and green, the tall figure there. He's the young Ethiopian, he's uh, kept uh, his powder dry. Now, the, uh, the athlete we were saying who'd done remarkably well to even find himself in this position, number 24, who has only won one previous marathon, Fentahun Bunungoy, is... Uh, looks to be the next candidate to be dropped from this group. Are we looking at eight becoming seven? So Abdi Nagir getting the support from the spectators as he crosses the Amstel, past the Amstel Hotel. So five kilometres left for Nagir as he just comes off the bridge. Well, I think, Chris, you're right. Huninyao, the Ethiopian, well, he's had a great race. If he can just keep going at the pace he's at, he's going to record a massive PB. Only once run the marathon distance to 14.26, so he's going to smash that time today. But it's now seven athletes, and yeah, it's really the first time that we've had an Ethiopian athlete who's setting the pace. Solomon Dixisa running alongside Alicia Rotic, and on the far side of the screen, you can just see the, the turnover, the leg turnover of the 16 athlete, number 16, Batesvai uh, Getahun, again, operating so much faster than he's ever run before. Well, they are sprinting now. The cadence and the, the rhythm of these runners is so, so impressive. But once again, we're keeping an eye, and I keep marking your card about the, uh, the, the devastating sprint finish of the number five there, the Kenyan uh, Elisa Rotic. And now look at that, the, the splintering of this group. We, we mentioned the, the young Ethiopian who's been dropped, but look at that, they're now single file, Indian file. And this, approaching 38 kilometers, could be the decisive break here. They're continuing to put their foot to the pedal. 
So within the matter of 20 metres, those big gaps are now opening up. Maurice Kachaga, Daniel Kemboy dropping back. This, the really tough part of the marathon. Number 11, Maurice Kachaga. A few moments ago, he was in that leading group. And now, as they take their last drink station before entering Vondel Park, even Tadu Abata is now having to work really hard to stay in contact with those leading four athletes. So it's the Kenyan, Elisa Rotich, number five, at the front of the race, being pursued by Solomon Dixisa, number three, and just a few metres down, Vincent Kipchumba, and the second Ethiopian, Batesva Getahun. Here's the Rijksmuseum. Yeah, the Rijksmuseum seeing that for the second time. They'll be pleased to see it for the second time because it means they're almost home. It's been a, a really hard hour and 53 minutes of running here, but we have Kenya against Ethiopia. Remember, the number three there, right of picture, Solomon Dexiso was third here and a huge personal best of 204.40. That will be a personal milestone for him. But the other two, you know, are hanging on in here. So we have two Kenyans and two Ethiopians battling it out with a slight gap between one and two and three and four. But what a performance here from Batesva Getahun. He's the youngest in the field here, just 21 years old. He was fourth at the World Half Marathon Championships in Copenhagen whilst just 19 years old. But he's making his full marathon debut here, and what a debut it is. There they are, entering Vondel Park. 38.5 kilometres, so just over two miles of running to go to the stadium. And it's the these two athletes, Elisha Rotic and Solomon Dixisa, who are pushing and trying to trying to get away. Elisa Rotic, PB of 206.12, so not as fast as Dixisa, who ran his personal best here last year. Well, Nagea, just over a minute down on the leaders as he passes the Rijksmuseum. Well, here's the race now unfolding in uh, Fondle Park. There is uh, the athlete in third place, Vincent Kipchumba, who's giving pursuit. He hasn't given up on these leading two of uh, Rutic and uh, Dixisa, but uh, into Fondle Park under the the main road there, and they are approaching 39 kilometres. So just uh, just over three kilometres to go to the finish. The last 10 minutes of running, and they're still in contention here, aren't they, these two? Eight and 16. The Kenyan, Kipchumba, and the debutant here, who's having a fine run, Getahun, the 21-year-old, who's found a, a little bit of a, a purple patch here, ahead of steam. Women approaching 35. So it looks like five women in that leading group, including two of the favourites, number three, Mimi Belleta, and number two, just behind the pacemakers, Asmeru, Asmera Gebru. Also in that group is another debutant, Degitu Asmeru. So five in the women's race, still in contention, back in the Vondel Park. It, the men's race, it's Batesva Getahun and Vincent Kepchumba who are really working hard to close that gap on the two leaders, Rotic and Dixisa. It's great to see Dixisa back at his best. He's had a very difficult 2019, dropped out of Boston. So actually hasn't finished a race this year because his only race start was in Boston, but has been training hard under his coach, Gatanik Tessima, but those four athletes seem to be coming back together. They do. They've worked really hard as a pair. They may be uh, rivals in terms of uh, nationality. Kipchumba and uh, Getahun, but they've worked as a pair really intelligently, and they're approaching 40 kilometres now, still coming through Fondle Park. And once they 
exit the park, they'll be at uh, 41 kilometres with literally just, a, oh, just over a, a kilometre to go. 1,200 metres will be all that remains when they come out of the park. So at the moment, we have Kenya 1, Ethiopia 2, Kenya 3 and Ethiopia 4. These four well clear. Which of these runners, I wonder, will miss out on the podium? And those uh, five metres, they can just seem so hard to close at this stage of the race. You can see how hard Vincent Kipchumba, the Kenyan, the tall Kenyan, is, is working to close that gap. But it seems that the two of them have come back alongside him. Right at the back of that group, number 16, the Ethiopian Getahun, started out as a track runner, uh, but left the track two years ago and has moved up to the road. Nagea, well, still looking smooth and has done really well to keep his rhythm. Two and a half kilometres left for Nagea. Not going to achieve his goal of improving on the Dutch record here, but still looking for a good time. 40 kilometres for the leaders, so just over two kilometres to run, and that gap of five metres is still there. And it's Rotich the Kenyan. Well, Rotich the Kenyan, we mentioned with the uh, the devastating finish. We haven't seen him unleash it yet, but these final kilometre and a bit are going to be really, really testing here. Dixita, with that rather ungainly, slightly untidy wide, wide arm carriage we've mentioned, is not doing him any harm at all. He's still very competitive here. And uh, it really is a race unfolding now. We're down to the last two kilometres of this race. It's been hard, it's been attritional, it's been hugely entertaining. And we're just trying to read into the uh, facial expression. Just a little glance to the left and right from Dick Sisa. What is he reading into his uh, other competitors here? Kipchumba there has worked really hard to stay on the coattails of these leading two. Two Ethiopians, two Kenyans, all battling it out here on the streets of Amsterdam for a famous victory here in 2019. Really, really impressive how Kipchumba, the tall Kenyan in the white vest, has clawed his way back, coming to this race off the back of a win. Well, got an idea now from that, those splits that Dixisa, they're about a minute outside Chirona's course record pace from last year. So I think the last five kilometers have not been as fast as they were last year. So I think the course record is going to stay. But the question is, amongst those three athletes, who's going to win? And it's Rotich, the Kenyan, who's done so much of the leading over the last few miles. Still at the lead, but now they're being joined by Kipchumba. As we said, Kipchumba's come into this race off the back of a, a big win in Vienna earlier this year. And it's the Ethiopian Batesva Getahun who is struggling now to stay with that, that pace. Yes, the Ethiopian has been dropped in his first ever marathon. So we're down to two Kenyans and one Ethiopian. Is this the, the podium here unfolding as we approach 41 kilometers? This is a straight shootout on a Sunday morning here in Amsterdam. Rotic leading the way, the one we mentioned, the athlete with the sprint finish, the devastating sprint finish, Kipchumba, the older, more experienced runner, and then Solomon Dexisa, right of picture, the only Ethiopian, don't discount him, approaching 41 kilometres. They're outside of Fondle Park now, and they are into the last 12 or 1,300 metres of this race. Which way is this going to go? Look at the speed of these athletes. You wouldn't think they've been running for over two hours, but they have, and they now have under five minutes of running left here in Amsterdam. So 1,200 metres of racing still for the men, back to the women's race as they cross Amstel River, past the Amstel Hotel. And as we've seen, Asmera Bekele, the, sorry, Asmera Gebru, on the shoulders of the two male pacemakers. Well, exactly 1,000 metres to go. The last kilometre here in Amsterdam in 2019. 
Kenya one and two, and it, now it's Dick Caesar who is starting to feel the pace. Wearing number three, he was third last year. Can he avoid having to settle for third this year? Into the final kilometre here. This is where it starts hurting. This is where the racing goes. Are we looking at a straight shootout here between two fellow Kenyans? Elisha Rotic there in the blue, wearing number five, and Vincent Kipchumba, the 29-year-old, wearing the white, number eight. Kenya one, Kenya two, and Ethiopia now three inside the final kilometre. Well, Vincent Kipchumba has worked really hard to get back to that leading group, and now he's actually taken over the lead and is actually the strongest looking of the three athletes. So it's Vincent Kipchumba from Kenya, number eight, leading out Solomon Dixisa, the Ethiopian who's been with the lead throughout the race. So Vincent Kipchumba has opened up two or three metres on Dixisa. And Elisha Rotic in third place. Dixisa has rallied here. That's the finishing line there inside the Olympic Stadium. We will wait for them inside the stadium. The final 200 metres of this marathon will be on the track. It's half a lap of the track and they are almost there. Inside the final 500 metres here in Amsterdam, it's Kenya 1, Ethiopia 2. Kipchumba leading the way. He had to work so, so hard in Fondle Park to get back in contention. And here he is leading the way. This would be the biggest win of his career. There is Tadu Abate, who was uh, in contention for much of the race. 400 metres to go. It's Kenya 1, Ethiopia 2. They can see the stadium. I am Amsterdam. Will it be Amsterdam? who will be greeting Kip Chumba here in 2019. He's almost there. We'll see him come into the stadium. We can see him now from our commentary position. 200 metres to go, and it could be a famous victory here in 2019. Vincent Kip Chumba, the 29-year-old, he won in Vienna in April, and he's on his way to victory here in Amsterdam in 2019. The course record set last year by Lawrence Chirono will not be disturbed today, but what a performance here. It's Kenya's day again. It was Kenya's day in 2017, 2018 through Lawrence Chirono, and now it's Kenya's day again in 2019. Vincent Kipchumba, who won in Vienna in April with a massive personal best. Keep an eye on the clock, 2.06.56, he's done it again. Vincent Kipchumba wins in Amsterdam in 2019, 2.05.09, unofficially the winning time. It's a huge personal best. Solomon Dixita, third last year, makes it second in 2019. And in third place for Kenya, Elisha Rotic, with the sprint finish that perhaps didn't quite happen today. And what a debut for the second Ethiopian home. Matesma Gatahun, the 21-year-old from Ethiopia, comes home in fourth place. What a race, what a performance. And again, it's Kenya's day. Vincent Kipchumba. Well, what a great victory for Kipchumba, how he worked so hard through Vondel Park to get back with the, the two leaders, Rotic and Dixita. It looked for a few minutes that he was uh, going to struggle and drop back, but he worked his way back and then took the lead in the final kilometre. Here's Nagea. Abdi Nagea had hopes on improving on his Dutch national record of 2.06.17 at the start of today, but now still running smoothly. Remember, he ran, run, ran a national record of 2.08.16 here in Amsterdam two years ago. 400 metres to go, Abdi Nagea, who's struggled hard, but here he comes. He has the stadium in sight, the Dutch champion, the national record holder will be outside his own national record here. It's been a long, tough road here today. He said he came into this race feeling good, in pretty good form. Patrick Sang, his, uh, his coach, part of the group there in uh, Cap Tibet in, uh, in Kenya. And here he is, into the final 200 metres, and the crowd, the Dutch crowd, getting behind their man. He struggled, we feared he may find it difficult to live with the pace, that 62-30 pace, the, uh, the early pace-making group led by Edwin Kiptu. But here comes Adby into the final home straight in the stadium, this iconic Olympic stadium here in Amsterdam with 100 metres to go, Abdi. 
Won't be the best time of his career, but it's been another impressive performance here by Abdi Nagaya, the 30-year-old, outside his personal best, outside the Dutch record, but he still finishes inside the top 10, and it's a, a really well-earned performance there from Abdi Nagaya, 2.07 and 30-something. His time will bring up the, uh, the confirmed times as we get them and tidy up all the results for you. So a reminder that our men's champion today here in Amsterdam, Vincent Kipchumba, coming home ahead of Solomon Texita, the Ethiopian. 2.07.39 for Abdi Nagea. And, uh, well, how, how pleased, how disappointed will he be with that today? Well, there's Kipchumba. The official time, 2.05.09. So, the second fastest winning time here. Remember, Chirono ran 2.04.06 last year. And there's one of the Kenyan finishers. Just showing us how hard the marathon is. Well, great win for Kipchumba. And that's the moment in the race when he just 400 metres from the finish, just opened up enough space between him and the Ethiopian Dixita. And coming into the stadium with 200 metres to go, it was, that was a big enough gap for him to come home and take his first win here in Amsterdam. Great race for Kip Chumba. His personal record here, improving by over a minute on the best time he set in Vienna earlier this year. So Vincent Kipchumba, Vincent Kipchumba Tadotic, to give him his full name. Well, isn't this interesting? Degetu Azmero, the Ethiopian debutant, is now leading the women's race. Well, we talked about how she came into this race as the fastest half marathon runner from her run in Ras Al Khaimah earlier this year. Well, this is going to be a real upset if she can hold on to this lead. Degitu Azmero. Well, let's just take a look at how this happened. There we are. Here's uh, Tigish Gera, the athlete in the blue and this was the moment just entering Fondle Park here for the last time the two of them stride for stride and away she went the handbrake came off and said right this is my time I'm on my way I've never run a full marathon in my life but I feel good she's 20 years old and that was the decisive break Digitu Asmiro the Ethiopian going past her compatriot Tigis Giamat and once you go you have to keep going no looking back now, is that decisive? That's what happened, and she's now on her way to victory. And here she is, live, and on her way to her first ever victory in her first ever full marathon, just 20 years old. She took silver at the All-Africa Games in the half marathon early this year. She ran 66.47 at the Rack Half Marathon last year, and here she is, Richard, in her first ever full marathon and heading for victory. What a performance. Well, this is a real surprise, but in some ways uh, it's great to see a debutant run like this in, in her first marathon. She said she's got a very, very strong training group. Uh, a lot of uh, athletes who've run under 2.20 or around 66 minutes for the half marathon, some of whom uh, have been competing in Delhi today at the half marathon. But um, she's just showing how strong she is from uh, the Gojam region of Ethiopia. So the women's race approaching the uh, the end, and uh, let's see if we can just grab a word with the winner of the men's race today. What a performance it was, Vincent Kipchumba from Kenya. At around 30k, it became a race. Did you feel very strong at that moment? Yes, I was very strong through training. And through the coaching of, uh, of this uh, event, I was ready for, for it. So I was ready for everything. At 40K, you were running at around the second or third spot. Did you still think, well, well it will going to be a hard race to make it uh, to, to, the, to the home stretch as a, as a winner? 
Yes, the bass was very high that I was not able to be with them. Then I, I used to step to be uh, behind them. Then I used to to progress my my my, my race. Okay, perfect. Congratulations with your victory and uh, enjoy your day. The winner of the men's race here in Amsterdam in 2019, Vincent Kipchumba. Yes, his, his previous uh, best before he, he ran that uh, time in Vienna earlier this year had been 2.10.32, and so that was a, a big improvement earlier this year. So the women's race into the final few minutes of running here, and it's the debutant from Ethiopia who is uh, going to upset the form book here on all expectations. Did it, did it to Asmiru, the 21, the 20 year old. And of course the course record, which has stood since 2012 by a fellow Ethiopian Meserit Hailu of 2.21.09, seriously under threat. Looking full of running still. This is of course completely unknown territory, uncharted territory for this young woman. And she's got great pedigree. She's got such a strong background in half marathon running but uh, yet again Richard Ethiopia just uh, produces another extraordinary talent off the conveyor belt yes and we've seen it here in Amsterdam so many times that the women's race has been won by Ethiopians we saw Tadalic Bekele win here last year and uh, Chris you've mentioned about the course record holder another Ethiopian Meseret Hailu so uh, whereas the Kenyans have been dominating the men's race uh, it's Ethiopia that has been at the top in the women's race and it looks like that's going to be repeated today with this debutant. Great to see her stepping up from the half marathon. So... I think they're about a kilometre from the finish. Yeah, just a few more twists and turns out of Fondle Park and now into the last one kilometer or so and what a moment over the brow of the hill here just over a kilometer to go here in Amsterdam then and we are heading for a course record in the women's race and it's the debutant Degutu Azimuru from Ethiopia who emerges on top of the brow of this hill what a moment for the young Ethiopian just 20 years old She's got the streets of Amsterdam to herself. She's really broken the back of all the resistance. And she now has victory in her sights. The Olympic Stadium very shortly will loom into view, gritting her teeth, but she looks still full of running, looks really confident, really composed, has kept her shape, the shoulders are still loose, and she's still full of running here with just a few more minutes of running to go. Well, what a performance to step up from the half marathon. Came into the race with the fastest half marathon time of all the leading women. Take it to Asmiru. As you say, Chris, there's the stadium. Got two more turns, I think, before she comes onto the track. Well, when she reaches the stadium, that will be just over 200 metres to go. There she is, approaching 500 to go. What a sight that must be for the youngster from Ethiopia, Degitu Azimiru. We've seen some fine performances here from Ethiopians over the years. We think of Heidi Gabri Selassie in the men's race. We think of uh, Tiki Galana, the eventual Olympic champion, of course, who won here back in 2011. But this is a new name for many people, Degitu Azimiru. On her way to a famous victory. 400 meters to go here it's one lap of the track and a new name is born here in 2019 for Ethiopia 400 meters to go Degatu Azimiru the 20 year old from Ethiopia on her way to victory here in her maiden marathon there is the athlete in second place giving chase hard Tigist Girma who was in contention until the latter stages but once again in Fondle Park the brakes came off, the handbrake came off and she was away. Now she's into the stadium, into the final 200 metres. We can see her now from our commentary position. She's almost there. What a debut this is. It's going to be an Ethiopian 1-2.
and significantly it's going to be a new course record. She is going to smash the course record. 100 metres to go, Ethiopia's day once again. It's a new name for women's marathon running here in Amsterdam. Ethiopia will get first and second, but the winner today in her first ever marathon, remember the name, Dikitu Azimuru, only 20 years old. She smashes the course record in Amsterdam in 2019. Meserit Hailu's record of 2.21.09 has been destroyed here by the youngster in Amsterdam. Degitu Azimuru in her first ever marathon knocks over two minutes off that course record. Second place, well done to Tigis Gierma, also from Ethiopia, coming home and a really creditable 2.19.51, also inside the former course record. So the first two home have beaten the former course record quite comfortably. That has been an exceptional race, and that's what it means to her. Ethiopia won and two in the women's race, but the winner this year in 2019, Degitu Azimiru, just 20 years old. Well, superb performances by the, the top two women. Degitu Azmiru on her debut to put in a sub-220 performance. Quite amazing. And the second-placed Ethiopian, Tigis Gilma, taking almost seven minutes off her best time. You can just see how, how excited she is to go under two hours 20. The best time, 2.26 coming into this race. And there's the third-placed athlete, Azmera Gebru, also running under the course record inside two hours and 21 minutes. So the top three athletes all under Mesodet Hailu's course record. A new course record hit here this year. Imi Perita having to settle for fourth place. The Ethiopian-born athlete now representing Bahrain, who was uh, in the mix there. And she's only just outside the former course record. So, uh, Ethiopians, one, two and three in the women's race, all inside the former course record. And, uh, and I wonder what Meserit Haidu is uh, thinking wherever she's watching this. I'm sure she's got a, a keen interest. Such happy memories of uh, having set that course record back in 2012. No course record in the men's race today. Lawrence Chirono's mark remains intact. But that is emphatic, isn't it, Richard? That has been utterly destroyed today, the course record in the women's race. They were just under course record pace as they went through halfway, but clearly Degatu has run a negative split. This is the point in the race with about two miles of running still to go, where she took over the lead from Tigis Girma and went with the pacemaker. And uh, the pacemaker did a great job, took her all the way to within sight of the stadium. And there is the moment in which Degetu Azmiru broke the course record, won her first race, and really put herself right up there in the top bracket of women's marathon running. 2.19.25, her winning time. Well, terrific performance there from uh, the youngster. And it's quite a debut. Let's just hear uh, the thoughts of another big player on the stage today. We are now going to speak to the uh, the Dutch number one, of course, the Dutch champion. It's been a tough day today. Here are the thoughts of Abdi Nagea. Abdi, what a performance today. Can you be satisfied with uh, with your race for today? Um, uh, not actually. Of course, I came here for the first time. But again, um, I had some hamstring problem during uh, the half marathon. So uh, end of the day, I'm happy that I'm uh, I'm okay and I'm healthy. Uh, so yeah, I came here for first time for first time. But uh, happy that that my body's okay now. Did it felt like a struggle from start to finish for you? Yeah, yeah, actually from uh, 10K, I think I was feeling it was coming up and I was trying to don't think about it because I was feeling the trainings the last uh, four months, four weeks. But uh, again, I was trying to concentrate, to think positive, but still uh, it was coming and it was coming more and more until uh, it was really stiff. And uh, yeah, I was not able to roll, to have good rhythm. So just trying to survive and to see until how can I, how long I can go. Okay. Um, 
at, at the half marathon, you were running like uh, 63 minutes or something. Um, did you still uh, thought like, um, well, I can make it uh, to the finish line in a new PB? Um, actually, I was worried about my body, so I was like, let's see where uh, I was feeling. I was really feeling it, so I knew it was it will be very hard because we came through 63. To run another 63 flat was really not easy, but uh, again, I'm just happy now that uh, still 27 is okay. It's good time, and uh, that my body is okay. Both medals, the last event of the school in the Swag of Tempo. To end in 20 years, we have to go to the end of 20 years, 20 years, 20 years. Both medals, the last of you, both medals. And here's the result of the last of the year, the last of the year. Representing Kenya, Vincent Kipchumba. What a moment for Vincent Kipchumba, backing up his victory in Vienna earlier this year in a huge personal best two hours five minutes and nine seconds knocking almost two minutes off his previous mark and uh, what a day also in terms of prize money 40,000 euros for winning the race easily the biggest victory of his career so our podium finishes here in Amsterdam in 2019 in third place Alicia Rotic from Kenya in second, Solomon Dexisa, Ethiopia, and our winner in 2019. There he is in a huge personal best, Vincent Kipchumba from Kenya. And now, ladies and gentlemen, with a final time and a new track record of 2 19 26, please your attention, your respect, and applause for the female winner of the 2019 TCS Amsterdam Marathon, representing Ethiopia, Degitu Azimelo. So the winner of the 2019 TCS Amsterdam Marathon, Degitu Azimelo, 20-year-old, debutant at the marathon, a new course record. What a day for her, and what a year for her having won the silver medal at the African Games in August. And now to record her first big city marathon victory here in Amsterdam. So our top three finishers in the women's race here in Amsterdam, the winner, Degetu Azmiru from Ethiopia, a new course record, two hours, 19 minutes and 26 seconds. In second place, also from Ethiopia, Tigis Girma, in two hours, 19 minutes and 52 seconds. And in third place, Azmera Gebru from Ethiopia, 24 years of age, two hours, 20 and 52 seconds. So there, the top three in the women's race, here in Amsterdam, standing alongside the top three male finishers. We've really enjoyed watching two great elite races with Vincent Kipchumba from Kenya winning the men's race and Degetu Azmiru, the new debutant at the marathon from Ethiopia, winning the women's race in a new course record.